Good evening, everyone. Hope you are all able to hear me. Uh, please uh, just text if you are uh, able to hear or if you have any issues. Uh, yes, sir, it is audible, sir. You can put it. Okay, Gokul, one request. Huh? Yes, sir. Can you unmute my uh, another session? Uh, yeah, one minute. So I don't want to have some network issue. So this time I'm using two computers. Sure, sure. So that uh, it becomes easy for us. Sir, it is done, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sir, even uh, you can record now. I have given access to record. Okay, so I think you are recording now, right? So uh, I am recording. Let me go. Thanks. Okay, uh, friends, thank you. Thank you for joining. Uh, this is our third session. Okay, and uh, let me jump quickly into. Into the session so that we save some time. We are using this uh, data set. It's a CSV file. So this is the data we were uh, uh, looking before. One twice uh, energy data. This is what something uh, which we have seen. And what we did is uh, with this particular data. We created a time series. Uh, Tom, sir, uh, sorry to interrupt. Just one thing. Uh, now, whether you are able to record it now or uh, should I stop my recording? No, um, Tokal, I will learn from you how to record maybe for the next session. Uh, okay. So for this session, let me go with uh, this, uh, whatever arrangement you have already done. Sir. Okay, sir. Okay, fine, sir. So 
we loaded this particular uh, uh, data and this is the data what we had okay so then we data we had um, over the field of uh, thing okay so with a line graph something like this was the data we had and we export the data um, using power bi and we also saw how this particular data is and we also saw like uh, this data is having a trend and um, also some cyclic values it's called the seasonal values and uh, uh, there are some noises also there are some noises also so this noise we want to take uh, get rid of it uh, okay so uh, i am just uh, taking this particular session with the power bi just to show you uh, how easy it is to do analytics with these kind of business intelligence tools okay so th these are all uh, something called the widgets what we are having okay one of the widget for uh, ng management professionals uh, i think in our first session we saw what is this shanky plot and how easy it is to draw a shanky plot with the data only uh, thing is you need to organize the data uh, in a way uh, like a so destination like that we have to organize the data i will just show you that okay source and destination and what is the energy value and we are able to make a shanky plot which is widely used by energy management professionals okay and then we can have um, time based slicing of the data and um, um, there are some visualization we did with respect to time okay you can see january february march april and may we had this uh, time based visualization also okay and then we had some pie chart and other things which also will be useful for us we also saw forecast but not in the power bi but in uh, the uh, in the r platform we saw the forecast okay so just uh, to recap what we have done so far okay and for the benefit of uh, people who have newly joined i am just going to do things okay so uh, you can see here that is the data what we had and uh, this data we are loading inside okay importing some um, edges okay the uh, uh, time series data okay ts here stands for time series data okay and and i am taking only uh, 1 to 71 that means uh, i have a data up to 77 months uh, 77 months of data is there in the raw file which is month 1 to month 75 i have so what i am doing is i am taking only up to 71 month and trying to forecast the rest of the month okay that is what i try to do okay and um, uh, that's why i am taking the in data i am just uh, naming it as in data and uh, that particular in data i am just using okay, and uh, trying to figure out uh, whether uh, i will be able to identify the auto regressive uh, component is nothing but uh, with respect to the number of months what is um, uh, what is getting increased uh, or uh, am i seeing a trend in the energy uh, what the particular plant is consuming okay and uh, before doing that i need to do some processing of the data for that i am eliminating these uh, um, small uh, peaks and valleys what i am having okay by smoothening the data okay thus i am taking the average of two, two values and i am um, i am smoothening the data okay uh, i don't know who is this it is not me <laughs> i think someone have made a thing okay no problem okay so uh, smoothing we are doing and once the smoothing is done then we also uh, visualize uh, how our smoothing whether i will be able to uh, see the original data or the pattern of the original data or after smoothing i am using the thing the smoothing um, uh, of whatever data we had we are able to see like that it is matching with the original pattern so with that i am going to go forward and create a model and for this particular model i am just using only the linear regression 
okay and for the linear regression i am using month as one of the variable with the month itself i am trying to predict how much will be the energy okay that is the lm fit okay lm stands for linear regression okay or linear model so with that linear model i am also predicting for the rest of the months and i am seeing whether it is matching with whatever we have already done now i am able to predict some data but you can see here there are some values some values which i am not able to predict for example this particular uh, uh, spike here okay this all some spikes which has come in the energy data i am not able to predict it this all called noises okay so this noise uh, i want to identify how much is the noise for identifying the noise uh, i am putting a formula the formula is uh, whatever data i have predicted is there with global prediction and uh, what is the real data is the time series data and uh, if i minus the real data with the global prediction data then i will get the noise okay once i get the noise uh, i have to do some test for statistics uh, uh, to prove that this is a white noise that is real noise i am not able to model it and before going to that uh, i also use a function called uh, auto rm and to try to see whether i am able to you can see here that is called auto arima a r stands for auto regressive and m a is termed as moving average and this particular function i am using so that i can predict the uh, uh, predict the uh, whatever local variables i am having which according to uh, the the uh, plot it is a noise but i am trying to see whether even this particular noise uh, between minus 100 to plus Hundred will I be able to model it using some mathematical formula? Okay, so I am trying to model it. I think it has done a decent model, and um, there are some statistics which comes out. I am not going into deep because it is only a recap. Okay, this is what we saw. Uh, for the benefit of people who have joined only for this particular session, I will also post this particular code, and you can go through it. And um, you know my WhatsApp number. Please feel free to uh, get in touch with me if you. need some help okay so now i have predicted the in data which is the 71 months data and i have kept aside some data to validate my model whether the my model is okay okay so my model um, is having 71 months of data the remaining 72nd month to 77 month i am using it to validate my model okay so that i am terming it as out data and um, i am trying to see whether my out data i am able to predict it perfectly now uh, there is uh, a uh, calculation which i showed to uh, the people who have attended the last session okay show you an excel based uh, calculation how uh, the the error can be um, error can be found in uh, or error can be calculated in a, uh, this kind of time series forecasting okay so uh, we saw how this exponential smoothing is happening in an excel okay because excel is the very easiest tool where we can identify how the smoothing is happening or learn how the smoothing is happening and we also see one of the um, very uh, famous model called the uh, holes model uh, where people extensively use use it and uh, we also did a simple um, um simple uh, smoothing thing okay uh, and we also saw like there are two variables which is um, termed for uh, in a forecasting problem uh, the model efficacy can be seen with these two uh, data one is the rmsc which is the root mean square error and another is the mep which is a mean absolute percentage error okay so
people you are able to hear me now sir audible sir okay okay as uh, usual my uh, another internet got, uh, okay fine okay. fine okay. so that is the introduction uh, so that is the introduction what i want to give you that comes if you have uh, uh, we can go through it okay uh, Uh, or i will uh, copy and paste that particular uh, uh, file to all of you um, so that you can uh, go through it okay so uh, for this session what i want to show you is uh, uh, one of the uh, web based training okay uh, uh, we are not promoting any brand here but this is one of the brand uh, where this particular web based training Uh, so we have to mute others so that uh, uh, one minute sir i'm doing so i think my uh, this is my other computer okay uh, my personal one i want to show you this uh, uh, application okay just to take you through uh, or introduce you to the topics of uh, different type of uh, analytics okay Uh, this in the chat window for everyone. Okay, uh, after the check it. Please log in and check it. Fine. So uh, uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, WBD has uh, different uh, things. one of the thing which i uh, like very much is uh, okay so this is about the introduction okay why um, or what is machine learning why this is um, uh, needed and other things okay uh, but uh, you can go through it that when you feel uh, time okay when you have time okay so let's go to the uh, that thing okay so so here what they are doing is they are using an energy meter of an elevator elevator uh, the lift what normally we have you see here uh, energy efficiency analytics this is one of the service what the, this company is uh, giving okay and uh, uh, this elevator energy only using that they want to train the model okay and uh, see whether there are some abnormalities in the lift whether there are some abnormalities in the lift so last two sessions we saw how the energy forecasting we, we are able to do it now we are going into the next type of uh, um, analytics where we are introducing you to machine learning okay and especially using the energy meter as an input okay uh, so uh, what they uh, this um, wbt or the web based training is giving you okay so first thing is uh, they are connecting an energy meter to the Feeder of this particular lift, and that particular energy meter they are going to use, okay? and then some data from the controller, existing controller for teaching they are going to take. Okay, for example, whether the door is open, uh, for example, when the lift is getting operated, from whether it is going up or whether it is going down. Okay, sometimes the, the lift will be waiting for someone to go. Right? That is the ideal thing. These are all the things what we are taking, and. The, what they are doing is they are giving annotation to the ecg <laughs> here the ecg is the electricity energy consumption okay and they are giving for each and every um, um, uh, pattern of energy they are giving some name okay so um, let me also it to load okay so what they are doing is when the energy when uh, 
uh, it is um, uh, closing how much is the energy when it is opening how much is the energy and when it is uh, moving forward how much is the energy everything they are plotting it okay uh, so unfortunately it is uh, working okay so what they are doing is the energy consumption with respect to time okay with respect to time and there are some legends okay also available here Okay, so uh, in the bottom there are some legends which will appear for you. Okay, so let me do it step by step. Okay, so first step is uh, uh, the door is getting open. Okay, when the door is getting opened this is the energy consumption this is the pattern of uh, that energy consumption it is uh, happening okay and then it is going to the next which is idle because door is open and uh, it is waiting for someone to come inside so that is the idle energy pattern okay and then it is uh, closing okay during closing it is also taking some energy and uh, that is uh, annotated uh, as uh, um, green here you can show you the graph you can see the graph and uh, the next thing is it is idle for some time before starting its uh, ascent or descent that means going up or going down okay so in this case uh, the elevator is going down or going up whatever it is okay and it is going to the sixth floor and when it is going to the sixth floor it is taking some other energy pattern okay this is the pattern of the energy when it is moving it is coming forward okay and like that uh, when it is opening this is the energy pattern and when it is idle this is the energy pattern when it is closing, this is the energy pattern. Likewise, uh, it is whatever movement it is doing. Okay, um, uh, uh, I think everyone um, accept this. So when the elevator is coming down, the energy consumption will be high in the lift because uh, normally it will be having a counterweight and it has to work against the gravity. Um, and the work will be more when it is coming down rather than it is going up against the um, gravity. Okay. So like this, uh, you are having a different uh, um, events uh, happening, and for each of the events, uh, the energy data is getting captured. Okay? Getting captured. Okay? So like this, uh, uh, you can capture this particular data. Okay, say for uh, the almost uh, for one month. Okay, uh, let me play it for you. Okay, like this, you are capturing all the data. So this is the first step. Uh, what we are doing is we are capturing the data. Okay, after capturing the data, what we can do is we can teach the model to the system, to the to the computer or the controller, saying like when the energy pattern is like this, then you do uh, you do, uh, you think like it is closing. When it is like this, this is opening. When it is like this, it is idle. When it is like this, then it is moving up or down. Okay, so this is the machine learning. Okay, and this is how in real world uh, the data will be captured. I'm using this uh, particular red WBT because it is free uh, from um, uh, the company. What it, um, uh, I have also placed that particular link to you. Okay, please go through it and uh, we can discuss maybe in our next classes. Okay, so now uh, let's see. Now I, I have the data. Let me go step by step. What is the first thing what we will do? Okay, so. Uh, there are different things which we can do. Okay, one is called classification. So classification, what we do is we label the data or the pattern with each and every event, which is very distinct from each other. Okay, and then we will try to uh, teach the model uh, uh, and make it learn uh, in a discrete way, uh, like events it will learn. Okay, so next is the neural network, which is a very the old methodology of uh, teaching a computer um, uh, to behave or uh, to make decisions like humans, uh, but now because of the uh, more computing power, what we are having even for our mobile phones, which is a very small controller, to whatever laptops uh, and the availability of cloud technology by Google and Amazon and 
um, and Azure, Microsoft, and other people coming with a lot of uh, uh, computing power. Uh, this neural network is now becoming a reality, and it is one of the proven um, uh, uh, model which people are using for better uh, accuracy. Okay, and uh, so this is the second type of uh, method what we can do. The third is anomaly detection. Okay. So what happens is, uh, I know when it is closing, this is the pattern of energy it should take. When I am seeing a different pattern of energy, and when it is closing, that means what? Either there is a obstruction in the movement of the door. Okay, it may happen maybe one in one floor or two, uh, second uh, different actuators. Uh, okay, and uh, it may be a problem like um, uh, there is a combination how this particular door closing has to happen. Okay, and uh, there are a lot of actuators, mechanical actuators. So there may be some structure. Okay, that is one thing. Okay, and the the, um, uh, the next thing what they have covered is the forecasting, which we have seen with a small example of a monthly energy consumption, how we can forecast. And there is also a beautiful um, uh, material on how uh, this is a uh, yeah, domestic application, what we was told. What are all the challenges um, um, uh, when we are migrating the same uh, or when we are uh, trying to use the same technique in an industry? Environment, how it is, what are the challenges, everything is there. Okay, so it is a marketing material, but it is a very good uh, learning um, uh, way. Okay, so so now coming back to the, the um, uh, subject or the uh, place where we have left. Okay, so uh, here uh, for this particular uh, WPT, okay, uh, this particular session, let me only focus on one event, which is the door closing and opening. Okay, let me try to forecast uh, all. Try, try to predict uh, using the energy meter data. Will I be able to predict uh, whether that lift is closing um, or opening? Okay, um, only that particular thing what I'm going to see. Okay, nothing else. Okay, uh, just for the uh, this particular thing. Okay, let it um, open. Okay, this is what I want to do. Okay, so uh, here, uh, just to focus, there is a moment, okay, so uh, there are a lot of uh, questions here, okay, let's uh, see, okay, um, I told about, uh, oh, sorry, let me see, okay, so now what happens is this particular event, right, uh, the door closing, door opening, elevator ride, idle, whatever we are talking, uh, this is called class label, this is called class label, okay, so uh, whatever um, uh, data what we are getting here, we are having an energy meter um, trend or the pattern of energy meter, okay, and we are annotating uh, the pattern of uh, uh, the, the energy consumption with the yeah, label and that label is called class labels, okay, class labels. And with this particular understanding, let me uh, try to answer this particular question. Okay, so what it asks is uh, mark all the correct answer. A yeah, class label, okay, a yeah, class label can be used to specify the type of event. Okay, so now let's go to the chat window. Okay, and let's see uh, how many of you accept uh, like. Uh, how many of you accept that the uh, yeah, class label can be used to specify a type of event? Come on, how many of you accept? Okay, first is the answer. Okay, thank you. Um, GM, okay, you are right. Okay, uh, I feel it's right. Okay, let's see what is the answer. I don't know. Okay, and uh, the next option is uh, yeah, class label is a performance measure. Does it sound right? Does it sound right? Is your class label uh, your performance? Okay, again, GM. I think uh, let me wait for some more answers. Uh, somebody else? How many of you feel like uh, the class label is your yeah, performance measure? Whether yes or no? Hello? Let's uh, speed up. Okay, I, I think it is no. Okay, uh, come on, colleagues uh, or uh, friends, please be very interactive. Only then we can have the session um, uh, live. Okay, yeah, class label is a common machine learning task. Uh, is it yes or no? Is 
the normal machine learning task. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you can say yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sudhir Prakash. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Class label could, for example, be named as door closing event. How many of you say yes? Yeah, thanks, Google. Okay, no. Yes, no, yes, no. Okay, according to me, it's yes. Let's check the answer. But I'm a little doubtful. It's a common machine learning task. But let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I'm right. I think it is not a common machine learning task. But it's right. Yeah, yeah, class table can be used to specify a type of event. A class table could, for example, be named as a door closing event. Okay, so this is the class label. Okay. Now let's go to the um, uh, training part. Let's go to the training part. So what uh, we will do here is uh, we will use this particular data and we train the model. Okay, let me train the model. Okay, you see here um, uh, which snippet uh, showing uh, show, uh, showing a door closing event okay, among this particular patterns. Okay. This particular pattern, which pattern according to you um, says it is a door closing event? Okay, again, chat window. You, um, you can say option one, option two, option three, option four. Okay, you see this particular trend of the energy and tell me, okay, option one, option two, one, option two. Okay. Any some more answer? Yeah, Pradeep, welcome. Uh, ah. uh, okay, uh, okay. So here, what you have to understand is the pattern. What we are having is a standardized data. Okay, that means what it will do is for this particular period of time, it will convert it into a zero to one value. Okay, so it is standardized data. Here, seeing the standard data, I'm able to see it is flat. You see here, always the consumption is flat and it is at one level only. Okay, so this is maybe the right answer. Yeah, that is the right answer. Let's see. Great. Apparently, you have built a model. Okay, so this is how a man seeing this particular curve of a pattern of energy consumption makes a decision. So now we have to. Like how we made a decision, like this particular pattern is the door closing event. We have to train the machine also. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay, I'm skipping this. Okay, so now we have to train it. Okay, so with this, uh, uh, let me close the session and next uh, time we will have the next session where we will test it and we can take it forward. And I will also show you in our audio. Okay. So you see here, so the snippet of data is being given to the model and the training happens. Okay, so the, uh, uh, let's uh, do it automatic. Okay, you see here, this particular uh, sample of data is fed into the model and the respective label is also fed into the model and model um, uh, learns that if the pattern of data is something like this, then it is this. Okay, so like this, the training patterns. Okay, very important is very important is this. You see here, normalize input data. What is normalization? Next class, I will show you an example of this normalization. Okay, so now the training is happening, 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 happening. Okay, and after hundred percentage training is completed. Now my algorithm knows uh, uh, seeing the pattern of the data. Seeing the pattern of the energy consumption, it will make a decision whether it is a door closing event or not. Okay, so I have trained it. Now, what I have to do next, I have to test it. Okay, and so uh, let me skip this particular thing, particular time. Okay, but uh, I, I strongly recommend kindly um, go through this um, WPT, it's a very good one. Okay, please go through it. So now, uh, let me um, classify the data and let me see whether uh, things are okay. So now I have trained my model. Now what I'm doing is with the model, what it had, uh, what trained, I am asking the model to predict whether it is okay and uh, it is uh, doing it continuously. Okay, it is doing continuously. Now what I will do after.
after getting all the particular data, I will validate with the real value because uh, I know what is the real event which has happened. With that, I will compare whether my machine learning is accurate, whether my uh, student here, my student is the computer. I am making my student, which is my computer, to learn with the pattern of energy, whether this particular lift is open or closed. Now, my student is completely learned and it has written the examination also with the test data. So, this is the test data and my student has written the examination. This is the answer sheet what he had given. Okay. Now, what I have to do, I have a key with me, which is my um, real answer and I have to compare it with that. Okay. So, that comparison I have to create. There are different types of classification. This is one of the types which is called decision tree. You can see here it is making decision with respect to the things. Okay. You see here when the maximum power is something like this, it is a no door closing event. When the uh, power or the median of the power is like this, then it is a, uh, this, um, uh, a closing event. Okay. So, like this, this is how the real. Um, uh, model testing will happen. Okay. Okay. Model testing will happen. Now let's uh, do the testing also. Let's do the testing. You see here. Now this is uh, my predicted label. My students have written the examination. The examination result is this, and my uh, answer key is this. Okay. Real label. That is the actual event. So I haven't shown to my student the answer. I have asked him to write the um, answer, but you can see here he has written in this particular 15 a wrong answer. Like this, there are a lot of wrong answers. So now I have to find or make a correction of his answer paper and do this particular uh, evaluation. Okay, that is called the model evaluation. So now I am asking it, boss, please do the model evaluation. So it is doing, I'm just taking it, okay? Whenever it is wrong, with the red um, uh, refill, I am making it wrong, okay? So how many wrong, how many good, okay? That is my receipt. That is the result, what I'm giving to my student. So my student here, which is my computer, it has taken 86.8 percentage as smart, okay? So this is how the machine learning happens. And this is how I will test my, uh, or I will train my student, which is here, my machine, my computer, and I will also feed my student a test paper, which is my test data, and ask him to write the test. And then he writes the test, okay, I will correct that particular test paper and I will show him the result. Okay, so this is what a machine learning is all about. Okay, so this is what I want to show you. Last two sessions, we saw how time series forecasting we can do it. This session, we, um, we discussed about how with the energy meter data itself, we are able to create a model to predict what is the machine doing, whether the machine is working, whether in this example, it is a lift. I want to um, uh, teach my model, uh, please learn when the machine is open, how much is the energy or what is the pattern of energy it is taking. And I have used a decision tree, which is one of the um, widely used classification algorithm. Okay, so this is the one and we are in the last minute. Okay, so um, please, um, uh, if you have some doubts, you can also uh, ask me. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Pratik, uh, uh, the program, uh, not similarly this, but I can give you another example where this kind of uh, what we are going to do. Okay, I'm going to discuss about the uh, combined cycle power plant in our next class, where uh, we will be doing or we will be doing the prediction of how much is the energy that particular um, combined cycle power plant can uh, produce uh, given the ambient temperature ambient condition and the parameter for a ambient cycle power plant. Okay. In the next class, we will see how this particular testing and other things will happen in the real case environment using R, not in Python, using R. Okay. You, have to think. you can approach Mr. Gopal, he will help you out with the recording set. Okay. Any other